Um, what is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and welcome to this week's episode of Liquoron. This is Roly. <laughs> I did it all backwards. Um, and today we're going to be talking about some big news in financial crime and watches. Um, Sepp Blatter, former president of FIFA, um, says that FIFA owes him like 80 watches, paddock, longines, a lot of serious stuff. Hmm, let's get into it. Today I've got my uh, Panerai Radio Mir. Lovely. Love this watch and I love this Cordovan strap. Uh, I am wearing a Cartier Tank American. I actually just released a video mm -hmm. about how to wear a Cartier, right? Cartier watches are, are kind of old manish, they're old world, a little farty, not cool, but I think that they should be cool again. We're gonna make Cartier so cool again, it's gonna be so cool. And last but not least, I would be remiss not to mention the TNH giveaway, which has been sponsored by the folks over at Undone. Um, love Michael Young, love Barry. What they do is amazing from a repairs point of view. They call him the bracelet magician. He's working on your watch right now. Beautiful. I can't uh, wait to I see know. it. Is it a pain in the ass to send the watch across the world? Yes. But is it worth it? Yes. So there you go. Good for you, Michael. FIFA. An organization that you and I hold very close to our hearts. Yes, we do. Um, a sport that I got bullied for liking as a child. <laughs> That's right. So did I. I was the only kid in school that Play, you know, play soccer, yeah. Yeah, you're a foot fairy. Uh, right. I was like, okay, like, I like soccer. Yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> ole, ole, ole. Yeah, you want to play? <laughs> Obviously, in the rest of the world, soccer is an enormous, enormous sport. Um, and and the, the opposite, I think, of being a foot fairy is being a large financial criminal, right? Yes. Um, which is what FIFA and, and, and the leaders of FIFA have been accused of being um, pretty, and, and it's like been substantiated yes. for the past like 20 years. And all of this has, you know, come to a head, and now it's resulting in basically FIFA quite possibly holding hostage hundreds of thousands of dollars in watches of their former president. So we're going to get into that story in a second. First, wine. What are we drinking, Daddy-o? We're drinking a baby uh, Rioja. Uh, my Spanish heart. I love Rioja. <laughs> Faustino Septimo. Septimo. This is 2017, so it's, it's quite young. What do we expect from it on the palate? Modest tannin. Yep. Uh, it's got nice fruit. I think you'll find that right off the bat. Nine dollars. Nine bucks, guys. Yeah. Here at Liquor, yeah. we talk value. Yeah. We talk value. All right, let me give you the skinny. Sepp Blatter, president of FIFA, who stepped down just a couple of years ago, I believe in 2014, 2015, after a 17-year uh, presidency, has now accused FIFA of stealing over 80 watches. Sepp and other figures were accused of basically bid rigging mm -hmm. uh, the World Cup host location. South Africa World Cup, Russia World Cup, and Qatar World Cup. Um, essentially saying those countries never would have been the host right. for a multitude of reasons yes. if you weren't being paid millions upon millions of dollars to make them the host. So after this news broke and Sepp Blatter became one of the most hated men in sports, period, um, he resigned. He resigned from, from president and went to go live, you know, the rest of his life as a, you know, hundred millionaire in the Swiss Alps probably. But not before he managed to forget, I don't know how you forget, um, over 150 watches um, at his FIFA headquarter office. Why would someone have over 150 collectible watches at a FIFA headquarters? Because he viewed it as one, home, and two, extremely safe with all of the high security. Once you steal $150 million from a company, you might not get your books back. <laughs> FIFA has already returned over 100 watches to Mr. Blatter and he claims that 80 are still missing. His claim is that the monetary value, which he estimates in the half a million dollar range, isn't even the tip of the iceberg. The watches that FIFA has stolen from him um, represent sentimental value. And that very well may be true. I, I believe that if 80 watches were stolen, there are watches in there that are irreplaceable to that yeah. man. Right? Sepp Blatter is a watch collector. He was an employee of Longines. He's a watch geek. He doesn't need the money back. But if you stole my Rolex Datejust, like, you can't afford to pay me back for it. Right. Right? The watch is worth five grand. Fine. Yeah. But you, you don't have enough money to make me happy about it. Like a million dollars, you know what I mean? That's his point, I think. Right. So it raises a bunch of questions. One, how did they steal the watches? Two, did they even steal the watches? And three, does a man like Seth Blatter, someone who left FIFA after allegations of, of stealing over $100 million, even have the right to complain <laughs> if you got a couple of bucks stolen? Do you think 80 are actually missing? No. Period. No. You think he's making much ado about nothing? I think he's trying to recoup some of the money that he's not getting, uh -huh. some of his, his supposed settlement money. Yeah. I don't believe him. Sepp Blatter has the money to make this a big mess. 
Right. right? And it's a big enough name and a big enough kind of event yeah. for this to just be a, a PR disaster in theory. So what does FIFA do? Let's say the watches don't exist. What does FIFA do? It's a very complex, uh, complex situation. It's his word against FIFA, and, right. and, and quite frankly, uh, what type of relief does FIFA have to give him? How does he prove that that, uh, that 80 watches are, are, are missing? Also, when does it become not FIFA's problem? Like, I don't know, maybe the cleaning staff took your watches. Right. I don't know. There may be FIFA representatives, that people on the inside, that said, you know what? Oh, you're returning 160 watches? Keep 60. Or you could say FIFA is just as corrupt as Black Black Black. Right. It's not usually the case that a good organization is falling to the criminality of one single person. Right. I bet you there are dozens of people that work there that are just as corrupt as there were many. One of the like the old like jokes if you if you were a fan of uh, Serie A, right? Uh, yes. The Italian Premier League right. um, was all the refs had gold watches. Yes. Right. Because like you know Juventus would just be like listen. Here's a day date, right? It's really nice. It's a Rolex. You've always wanted one. You can't afford it. But here, here, here's the watch. Let's have a couple of calls go our way. All of these sports organizations, every big company is guilty in many ways. Look at the NFL, which I even resent even more. You find out that one of these owners, a real good guy that stands for American values, you know, swept the beating of a woman under yes. the rug. Yeah, heinous. It's, it's heinous. heinous. Yeah. So like, no, I'm not making any excuses for Seth Blatter. Right. I mean, you know, you, sh you should go to jail if you've stolen, like, if, you, if you robbed this kind of money you should um, but let's not pretend as if soccer is the only criminal organization in sports well that's it thank you so much dad for coming on the show it's an interesting topic absolutely please leave your comments down below what do you think soccer fan or not soccer fan um, sports are filled with corruption and uh, this is a messy instance yeah right? leave your thoughts salute guy